Now, here's a word that we hear, you know, we, we do a lot of programs on the supernatural of all, all different kinds, miracles, prophecies, different things. Here's a word that, that we hear pretty often, a seer. And of course, you are probably one of the, the people that are known most as being a seer. How would you describe what that is? I would really, for, for me, I'd break it down into two simple parts. Is just uh, on the on the broad side, uh, seeing in the spirit is just seeing what God is doing. Is seeing what is happening in the spirit realm. Um, the way that that is manifested for for me a lot and many many others that I know is that it involves just seeing angels, demons, and other spiritual things around us uh, in day to day life. And and how long has that been happening for you, yeah, Blake? So, so this has been something that's been part of my life for as long as I can remember. Some of my very first memories are, are seeing angels or, or seeing demons. It was just, just as much a part of my life as anything else. Really? Now, now growing up, are you talking about like when you were as young as two, three, four, five years old, this was a Absolutely. part of your life, you could see these things? Yeah, yeah, and I remember my, my very first memory is sitting in my little car seat in the back seat of my, my parents' minivan, and my, my mom was at the drive through window at the bank, and she was playing some worship music, and I remember looking around, seeing about a, a half dozen of these uh, baseball-sized lights just drifting back and forth in time with the music. Um, my, my second memory is actually seeing a demon. I was, um, I was in my parents' room, and they were, they were upstairs, and they were, they were in a little bit of an argument. And I remember I was, I was three years old at this point, and I was, I was looking upstairs kind of trying to hear what they were saying. And I just saw this um, face morph out, of, mm. morph out of the ceiling, and it was, it was long, and it was pale, and it had these kind of pointed teeth. Mm. And it, um, it kind of pulled away from the ceiling and drifted towards me, which I didn't appreciate very much. So I, no. I, I did my most advanced spiritual warfare tactic I knew at the <laughs> that time. You could at the time. Which was to jump into my parents' bed and pull the covers over my exactly. head. Exactly. But um, but yeah, for my for my whole life, I just um, all of my memories are full of seeing seeing these things. Yes. Now. Is this something that, that uh, of course, you didn't talk to people about, you had no grid for? Did you think this was just a normal thing that, that everybody uh, saw these things and knew these things? Yeah, it, it's something that kind of happened in phases, I guess is the best way to put it. You know, when I was, when I was really young, um, I would talk about the things that I saw, and I think, uh, you know, looking back now, I think most of the, the adults in my life just kind of, you know, uh, brushed it off as uh, children being active, ha having an active imagination, or you know, just kind of saying funny things. And because all kids have an imaginary friend, oh, right? You of know, course, so. sure, sure, yeah. <laughs> and, and so I, I didn't really think anything of it. You know, that I thought that maybe me pointing out, uh, you know, uh, uh, ladies dressed in gold dancing during during worship. Uh, my parents maybe not being interested in that was the the same as them not being interested in a fire truck or an airplane or other things that interested me, you know, as a, as a child. And so, for this first part, there was kind of this um, mutual ignorance, I guess is the best yes. way to put it. Um, now, as I got older, I I started to uh, get increasingly funny looks from people when I'd talk about the things that I saw. I can and yeah. you know, looking back, I. I, the impression that I got initially was, oh, I guess maybe it's impolite to talk about that, or, or maybe this just isn't the sort of thing that you point out, you know, just mm -hmm. kind of as you're growing up and learning what, what isn't is and is not okay to talk about. And yes. so uh, at around nine years old, I started talking about it a little bit less. Yes, yes, kind of maybe pulling away from some of those things that got the funny looks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe not talking about it so much at school sure. or whatever. Certainly, yes. <laughs> but I can imagine, Blake, because you were young, you really didn't know what was was going on, um, and you said that sometimes you, you saw both. You saw the angelic and you saw the demonic sometimes. Mm -hmm. I can imagine that there was probably times that there was a little fear because of the unknown there, but mm -hmm. but something changed that, that changed all of that for you. Uh, you started going somewhere else to a, a different church. What did you learn there? Yeah, yeah, just as you mentioned, you know, kind of from nine to 12, there was, there was some fear going on. There was, uh, I, I didn't really ha have a, um, uh, a grid for the things that I was seeing. Yes. We were going to churches yeah. that, that did believe in the gifts of the Spirit, but there wasn't a lot of really active training in here's what it looks like and here's how to do it. And when I was 12, we, we um, moved across the country and started going to a new church. Yes. And there they were really active about training people, especially in the prophetic. And my mom you know, took me to this, this prophetic class and as they were describing the different ways that God speaks, the different ways we can hear his voice about, about visions, impressions, his still small voice, it was the first time I'd ever really heard anything that, that gave any kind of grid for me to really 
understand the, the things that I was seeing. And it was the first time I felt, because of that, I felt comfortable sharing with my, my parents and the church leaders right. the, the full extent of what I was seeing, because right. for the last several years, I'd really not mentioned it much at all. Right. So did this give you the opportunity to, uh, to realize and, and understand that this wasn't anything that weird for you? This was a gift. This was a God-given gift. Absolutely, yeah. It, it, you know, up until that point, it kind of just felt like something that was happening to me, and that was yeah. the first time I even had this idea. Oh, this is a gift from God. This is something I could learn about, and grow in, and and mature in, and kind of pay attention to, mm -hmm. and uh, steward. Mm -hmm. I guess would be mm -hmm. the way the way to put it. Yes, yeah, steward and, and, and use it for ministry to help people to know things, to uh, assist people. Uh, your story is, it's, it's just amazing. Is, is that why you feel the importance of, of teaching other people? Absolutely. I think, I think when we, it's easy sometimes, it's like, and I grew up in the church, sometimes when you grow up with so much of the, what we learned in the church, it, it can become so normal that you don't necessarily see how it fits into your day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things I love about seeing in the Spirit is it helps us understand that we're part of something going on in the Spirit yes. on a moment-to-moment, day-to-day yes. basis, and to be to be actively involved in that. Yes, I like that because you, you make it very clear that this is not something weird. This is, this is a part of our day-to-day. -day. I like when you say that. This is a part of our day-to-day, -day, and it's that Spirit realm that goes right along with our our natural realm. There's there's something um, that I love that you teach about the light. It comes down to this, mm -hmm. the light versus the darkness. You teach us about that, the light versus the darkness. And there's an example that you gave about being in your office. Absolutely, yeah. You know, we have this I, I idea that when we don't know about the demonic and uh, uh, can a demon just jump on me? Is how, What does spiritual warfare really look like? And mm -hmm. You know, throughout Scripture, it uses the metaphor of, of darkness and light, darkness yes, representing exactly. the enemy exactly. and, and light re representing the things of God. And I love this metaphor because it highlights this truth that, you know, light doesn't have to fight to defeat darkness. You know, if I walk into my office and it's, it's dark in there, if I turn on the light, it doesn't, um, you know, the darkness doesn't slowly recede away. It doesn't, you know, slowly scrub away like a stain. The, the second that light is present, darkness is gone. In fact, darkness is nothing but the, but the absence of light. And so I think that wow. when, when we see in the spirit, we, see, we, we can see this reality and really mm -hmm. understand how it works in our, in our day-to-day life. Yes, yeah, so if we carry the light within us mm -hmm. and we enter a dark place, then immediately the darkness can be dispelled because of the light Absolutely. within us. I think that's such a wonderful analogy. Yeah. Well, let me ask you a question. We're gonna take a quick break, but first I have this question for you. Do you ever feel like sometimes you're just spinning your wheels, maybe just going around in circles and never getting anywhere? Well, Blake has a solution for that, and we're gonna hear that in just a moment. Well, welcome back everyone to Something More. I'm here with Blake Healy. And Blake, we were talking about, right before we left for break, we were trying to get it in, about, about it really comes down to the battle between light and dark. Mm -hmm. But I like the words that you use. You said, it, it's not a struggle. It, it's not a struggle between the light and the darkness because the darkness doesn't have a choice. Absolutely, yeah. It's, you know, the, the real battle is not whether light can defeat darkness. There's, there's no contest right. there. The, the real battle is, are, are we turning the lights on with the way that we're thinking? Are we recognizing that we're carrying the, the light of Jesus? And when we, when we do that, when we know that that's the struggle, it's not, you know, can the good overcome evil in this way? It's, okay, am I, am I turning the lights on in the way that I'm thinking, in the way that I'm approaching my life or this situation right now? Oh, that's so good. That's so good. I, I told you I love an analogy where you can just see that picture in your head where you walk into a room and you are the lighter carrying that light. Yeah. Boom, the darkness is gone. I love that so much. Okay, I, I ask a question before we went to break. I feel this way sometimes. Ah, oh, I'm spinning my wheels. I'm just going around in circles and, and, and I don't seem to be getting anywhere. You had a, a vision, a dream, or what? How is it that God showed you? Yeah. So this this is one example. I've actually seen things very much like this uh, numerous times. But um, in this particular example, I was um, I was up late one night and I was just really having a hard time falling asleep. And I, I won't get into the details of the story, but um, a friend of mine had done something that had really hurt my heart. You know, had had done something that just just really hurt my heart, and I was 
so upset about it. I was having a hard time sleeping, mm-hmm. and yeah. you know, you know, you know how it is. You're running things through your head. I should say this to them, or oh, I should just forget it, or mm-hmm. no, I need to confront them. And right, going, over you know, and over and over, over and over. You're talking yourself out of it, talking yes. yourself up to it, and yes. over and over and over. And I'm again. I think it was. I think it was at least one o'clock in the morning. You know, and I'm just like, oh, I need to sleep, and you know, I don't know what to do, and I'm just feeling so much, you know, pain about this, and. Finally, I, I, I just had this sudden com, uh, feeling of like, oh God, I don't know what to do, you know? And all of a sudden I, I looked in the spirit and, and over my bed, I saw this, um, this, this demon and this great big board. And this, this board looked like something out of, an, out of an old dilapidated game show. It even had these, you know, old light bulbs around the edges. And on this, on this board were these wooden slots that made up this, this very elaborate and very complicated maze. Oh, I hate mazes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. And this, this, this really complicated maze. And I saw in this maze this little cartoon depiction of a, of a heart. And this little heart was running this maze, you know, going this way and then double backing this way. And, and it, it, even the way that it was moving felt like it was evoking the exact same feeling mm-hmm. that I was experiencing. And I um and and the demon was just you know sitting there laughing, and again I'm just feeling this this feeling of Lord I, I don't know what to do please please help me, and I immediately just heard the Holy Spirit say w- where are the exits, mm. and I looked and it took a few minutes because the this was a really complicated maze but I ran my eyes all along these paths and I realized this this maze had no entrance it had no exit it had no destination it was it was simply just a, a route to run around that had no... So you felt like you were trapped, oh, I felt basically, absol- in your words. Absolutely trapped. And, and so I, I, again, just entered into that place of like, okay, Lord, I don't know what to do. And uh, the way I kind of described it after I thought about it later was I, I refuse to try to figure out what to do with this situation until I feel the Holy, presence of the Holy Spirit show up. And in that moment, that... that um, that board started to rattle and shake and actually just blew apart and the demon, you know, kind of blew away with it. And I was able to just rest in his peace and start to look at the situation from, mm-hmm. from that perspective. Mm-hmm. The takeaway that I got when I read that story and when you tell that story is the fact that that instead of continuing in the maze, immediately when you said, God, I don't know what to do, I need you. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden there was a piece about it and you know that he could work it out. So w- would you speak to folks that, that might be in that, in that same maze right now before yeah. we go any further? Absolutely, yeah. You know, I've, I've, that's one particular story, but I've seen that people in that kind of maze, in that kind of moment, dozens and probably hundreds of times at this point. And it's, it's this temptation to try to figure out the problem, to solve it, to, to work it out, to you know, come to some kind of conclusion. But in just choosing to stop and say, Lord, I'm in pain or I'm scared or I'm confused, whatever the emotion is, I, I can't do this on my own. I need your help. I need you to help me with this. And sometimes just taking that posture of not trying to figure it out, not trying to solve it, just makes room for the Holy Spirit to come in and just give you that little bit of perspective. And it makes it it's so much easier when we partner with Him in solving our problems than, a, than trying to figure it out on our yes. own. Yes. Probably the next time that happens, you'll go that route a lot faster. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> I know that I will. <laughs> I know that I will. All right, let, let's try to do one more story before we have to go to break. Um, the, I know it's very important for you not to just um, have this this gift inside of you that you can use, but to teach other people. Mm-hmm. And you have healing lines uh, in your church mm-hmm. where people come up and they can they can ask for prayer, whatever whatever their prayer needs are. And and this story, this lady. The way you describe her, she comes up and she felt like her life was falling apart. Every single thing in her life was just going going wrong. Mm-hmm. What happened? Yeah, so, you know, as you say, we have these prayer lines. This woman comes up and my job is going bad. My relationship with my husband's going bad. I'm feeling disconnected with my kids. And again, like in so many situations, I just you know, said, okay, Lord, what do you, what do you have for her? And I looked in the spirit and behind her, I saw three angels standing behind her and they were carrying these, these big kind of canvas looking bags and they were packed full. And immediately I kind of had the impression of like a, like a mail bag or a delivery yes. bag kind yes. of thing. And, and across the bag were just in uh, these big letters was printed just uh, undelivered. Mm. And I, again, I had seen things like this in the past and I knew this represented all the things that God wanted to say to her. 
And I just, just asked the woman, you know, have you ever practiced hearing God's voice? And she said, oh, I never really, you know, thought about that. And I, and I said, because I feel like God has a lot that he wants to, to tell you. Mm -hmm. And we just very, very simply did a little prayer. I said, hey, let's, let's just uh, pray here for a moment and see if God has anything to say. And I watched as we prayed, the, uh, one of the angels reached into its bag and pulled out one of these, these letters and, and opened it up. And it uh, tilted the letter and all of the words just kind of fell out and, and into this kind of gold sort of dust and landed on the, on the woman's head. And I said, hey, are you feeling anything? And she said, oh, I've, I'm feeling this peace. I'm just feeling yes. this, this uh, peace. And you know, we prayed through a couple of other things and I saw more letters come out and she prayed again and she suddenly had this picture of her and her husband and happy and enjoying life. And she said, I just had this thought come to my mind. And mm -hmm. I said, I think God's showing you what he wants to do. And just for bit by bit, this, this woman just kind of exercised this and she came back to me uh, a few weeks later and she had a huge breakthrough with her husband. Another few weeks later, a huge breakthrough with her job. Another few weeks, she was reconciling with her kids. Yeah. It was just yeah. beautiful to see what that simple change of inviting the voice of God did to her life. Mm. Yes, yes. So sometimes it's just a matter of us learning and, and learning how that, that we can ask and receive that gift for ourselves to, to work these things out. So I appreciate that so much about your ministry. Well, when we come back, you, you may have been saying, but I don't see anything in the spirit. And as I said, Blake is so great about, about making sure that he teaches other people how this works. So when we come back, this is going to be great. Blake is actually going to teach you the, the process that he teaches other people to see in the spirit. Welcome back to Something More. I'm Donna Chavis, your host, and I'm here for this show with Blake Healy. And Blake, we are having a great time, and I'm sure yes. people are learning a lot because there, there's something that I learned that's so simple when you're talking about seeing in the Spirit. Uh, learn about it and then ask, mm -hmm. ask. Uh, I've been doing a lot more asking <laughs> lately because of, of your teaching. So I certainly appreciate that. Now we told folks before we left for the break that you're gonna walk them through the process that you teach a lot of people. And now in this process, when you teach people, what kind of results do you get? I've gotten a lot of different kinds of results. I've had many people um, start to see in the spirit with, with their eyes uh, just immediately. I've had people um, start to just grow this uh, completely new and intimate conversation life with God where they're talking about what's what's going on uh, around them all the time. Sure. And so I, uh, there's been a wide variety of results, but they've always been really, really good. So I'm excited about that. If you had to put, uh, if you had to quantify it somehow, like a percentage on it, how many people, when they go through this practicing, this exercise, actually uh, God shows them something? I would say that um, in, in most of my experience, about 80% of people uh, either, either in, in, the, in their mind's eye or the Lord, uh, you know, speaking to them, see something that is, uh, that is going on in the, in the room at that wow, moment. Wow, that's, so. that's a lot. Yeah. I would have thought, oh, 20%. 80%, did you hear that? 80%. <laughs> All right, let's do it. I'm gonna turn it over to you and will you just lead everyone through that process to ask and to wait for the Lord? Absolutely, yeah, and it's, it's just really, really simple. All this is is just a, a way to posture yourself uh, when, when you're practicing, just seeing what God's doing. So what I ask people to do is, you know, you can you obviously be doing it right now, but to practice this in worship or prayer or at other times, just um, kind of get quiet and just ask the Holy Spirit a simple question. Where do you want me to look? Do you want me to look on this side of the room, that side of the room? If you, if you don't necessarily get something right away, then just uh, look for that feeling, that draw that you have to, to this part or this part. Now, should they close their eyes? Should they be, what, what do, how do we position ourselves at this point? I think at this point, it's just good to do whatever makes you feel comfortable. Okay. So kind of closing your eyes and quieting yourself helps, and that can be really, really good. Um, but once the Holy Spirit gives you a spot and look there and make sure to look with your eyes open because you, you want to be ready for him to do more than you expect. Yes. And so oh, oh, oh. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Say that again. Be yes. ready for Be ready for him to do more than you expect. I've had people do this yes. exercise and they do it with their eyes closed and they can see a bright light press in front of them through their eyelids. But then like, oh no, your eyes were closed. Okay. <laughs> you know? well. So anyway, um, so look there with your eyes open and then just ask the Holy Spirit to show you what's there. Now, the thing I always tell people here is look for big things, look for small things. I've had people see something very dramatic with their physical eyes, the way that I'm seeing right you 
you right now uh, immediately. And then I've also had people um, look uh, and just kind of see a, a vision or a picture in their mind's eye. And so no matter, no matter what, is, what version of that you go for, just, just look for the Holy Spirit to show you something. And then this is the most important part. Ask the Holy Spirit what it means. Because you want to start, the, the main goal of this is we want to understand what God's doing. We want to understand um, the, the, what's going on in the Spirit around us. And just take a few minutes to do that. So very, very simply, ask the Holy Spirit where to look. Look there with your eyes open. And then ask Him what that, what, whatever you're seeing, what it means. What, what the purpose of it is. And I've had so many people, if, if, as they consistently practice this, it uh, just creates this whole conversation life with the Holy Spirit. And you said that there's a purpose for this, and the purpose isn't that I'm just gifted and, and this is just for me, but, but it's for every believer, and it's uh, for developing a relationship. Absolutely, yeah, I, I deeply believe that this gift is meant to be available to every Christian. And the, the purpose of it is we, we are learning about our Father's business. We're learning what our Father is doing. We're learning about Him. We're building our connection with Him. I believe that the first purpose of every spiritual gift is, is connection with the Father. And out of that flows everything else. It flows, flows ministry, flows evangelism, flows every good thing. Yes. Yes, uh, we've got a few seconds left, but I always want to end in prayer. Will you pray for those that are watching before we leave? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I just, I just release a blessing on the eyes of every single person's heart right now. I just release your eyes to be open. I bless your conversation life with God, that you will have a rich, full, interactive life with Him. And I just bless your ears to hear His voice. I bless your heart to be connected to His. And again, I bless your eyes to see what your Father is doing. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Blake, thanks for being with us. Thank and you. thank you for joining us here on Something More again this time. Please join us next time. Call now and get Blake Healy's brand new book, Indestructible, and his exclusive three-part audio CD master's class, Nine Keys to Seeing in the Spirit, plus this bonus bookmark, an exclusive package for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9701. Through Blake Healy's brand new book, Indestructible, you will learn about angels and demons from a man who can see them. Blake answers your pressing questions about spiritual warfare, such as what spiritual weapons has God given you? What kind of enemy are you facing? Can God really use you to fight this battle and be victorious? You will also receive his exclusive three-part audio CD master's class, Nine Keys to Seeing in the Spirit. Through this teaching, you will realize that the gifts of the Spirit are meant to lead you into a deeper relationship with God. Learn how seeing in the Spirit works and how you can begin your journey in walking in the supernatural. Understand how angels minister and support you. Understand how to operate in victory and your God-given authority. Blake prays a blessing over you for God's presence and peace, for your heart to become softened to God's voice and nature, for you to clearly hear God's voice, for your ears and eyes to be opened to see into things of the Spirit. You never ever have to worry about the fight between light and darkness. It's not a fair fight, you win. Plus, you will get this bonus bookmark, Nine Keys to Seeing in the Spirit. This bookmark will allow you to keep these nine keys in your jacket pocket or in your Bible as a reference wherever you go. Don't miss out on getting Blake Healy's brand new book, Indestructible, and his exclusive three-part audio CD master's class, Nine Keys to Seeing in the Spirit, plus this bonus bookmark, an exclusive package for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9701. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina 28278. Please specify offer number 9701 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.